Hello, I'm Richard Edmondson. I'm the Professor of Gynae Oncology at the University of Manchester and I'm also a consultant gynaecological surgeon at St Mary's Hospital in Manchester. The project we've been working on, funded by Target Ovarian Cancer, is to investigate the DNA damage response in ovarian cancer to see if we could develop tests that will predict outcomes to chemotherapy for patients. So the main objectives of our research were to see if we could use cancer cells taken from patients' tumours investigate how those cells repair their DNA damage, but really use that to then develop a suite of assays that would work together to develop predictions for whether an individual patient is going to respond to their chemotherapy or not. The ultimate aim of this is that taking a biopsy from a patient would allow us to then predict whether that patient is going to respond to chemotherapy. That would be a really useful test to have because it would allow us to then help patients to decide whether chemotherapy is the right option for them. For patients with ovarian cancer, they have to make decisions at several points in their pathway about what treatment is going to be best for them. Most patients will have chemotherapy when they first present, but for some patients whose cancer comes back, it can be a difficult decision to decide whether to have chemotherapy at that point or to have other treatments, including surgery, or to just sit and watch and wait for a while. The idea of developing these tests would help patients to decide what was the best treatment for them at a particular point in their own pathway. So what we were able to do was we took tumours from 62 patients who underwent treatment at St Mary's Hospital. We used those samples that patients kindly gave us and we were able to develop a suite of five assays, five tests, and these five tests when put together gave us a really accurate prediction of whether that particular patient was going to respond to the chemotherapy that they then had. This was only done in relatively small numbers and it now needs more work to try and establish whether these are true findings and can actually be used in the clinical setting, but that work's ongoing at the moment. So this sort of work is really important because what we'd like to do is get to a position in the future where we can help patients to make the best decision for them at any particular point in their pathway and give them very accurate predictions about whether they're going to respond to the treatment that's being proposed or not. And this will help them make the best decision for them. One of the things we know about ovarian cancer is that everybody's tumour is different and in fact every patient's different and what's the right decision for one person might be a very different decision for somebody else. These sort of tools will help them make their best decision. To take this research on, we've already established some further funding and we've been doing some further work looking in a different patient cohort to try and show whether these findings are real or not. If that validates what we've done so far, then we'll look at how we can expand this and roll this into a test that could be taken out into clinical practice. So at the moment, this research is still a little way from being able to be employed in clinical practice, and it does need several rounds of further investigations to get to that point. But I think it's provided a really important platform on which we can build that and hopefully get to where we need to be, which is something that's available in the clinical setting. So I think we're entering a really exciting time for patients with ovarian cancer where there are going to be new treatments available and one of the challenges we've got is knowing which treatment to use in which particular setting. So further work to try and work out what's the best treatment and how we sequence the different treatments that we have is going to be really important. We also need to focus on areas like immunotherapy where we use the body's own immune system to help fight a particular cancer. So far, uh, immunotherapy trials haven't been very um, encouraging in ovarian cancer, but I think we're beginning to understand some of the reasons why that might be, and then what we can do about that to make immunotherapy work better for ovarian cancer patients. Target ovarian cancer and its funding strategy fills a really important gap in the funding that we receive for cancer. There are major organizations like Cancer Research UK and the National Institute of Health Research that are very good at funding both basic discovery science and clinical trials, but the niche that target ovarian cancer fills very well is that translational link and how we get results from the laboratory into clinical practice. And they've been really successful at funding some really good projects in the past that have allowed us to bridge that gap between what's happening in the laboratory and what needs to happen in the clinic. 
So this is a great chance for me to say a huge thank you to several different people. Firstly, I do want to say a big thank you to the patients that have helped in this research because they've kindly given us a sample of their, their tumour once it's been removed at surgery and that's been invaluable for what we've done. But we couldn't have done this as a team without the funding that we received from Target Ovarian Cancer. So I want to say a huge thank you to all of those who've supported the charity over the years, raising money through a wide variety of activities and all sorts of different things that have gone on to raise this really important money that we have used so well in this project.